welcome, welcome, welcome. But before I start, please, 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 can I be seen and can I be heard? Hi, Pooja. Hi, Sonali. Hi, Memes for Fun. Hi, My Diaries. Uh, hi, Aarti. Who else is over here? Hi, Pratyush. Oh, that's such a sweet comment. Thank you, Pratyush. Hi, Education World. Hi, Kahaniyo Ka Khazana. Wow, wow, wow. Very nice. Hi, Pavin. Hi, Dheeraj. Hey, can you see me and can you hear me, please? Important, very, very important. Hi, Shiv Shankar Das. Hi, Study World. I'm fantastic, Aarti. How are you? And nobody's answering whether I can be seen and be heard, no? Yes, Paradwaj says yes. Shiv Shankar Das says yes. All right, Pooja says waiting was waiting for your session. Aarti gives me lots of thumbs up. Yes, we can hear you. All right, I was also waiting for this session. You know, I love doing live sessions for y'all. I always say this because I love to interact with y'all. I love how beautifully y'all participate in everything, and I just like to be with y'all a lot. They are. Okay, so before I go ahead and actually start with today's session, uh, I want to tell you how many of y'all have gone ahead and um, enrolled for Anthe. What is Anthe? Akash National Talent Hunt exam. And this is a fantastic opportunity. If you actually were to register for this exam, registration is absolutely free. It doesn't cost you anything. And there are so many benefits, right? So anybody from class 7 to uh, class 12 can enroll. I see some ex uh, some comments over here saying registered, enrolled. Sonali says me, very good. Education says 13th is my SST exam. Pooja says 16th is my SST exam. Pratyush says registered. Okay, then let us quickly move on for the people who have exams and um, even for the people who do not have exams, let's start here. So what am I going to be doing with you today? Okay, I'm going to be doing a very easy peasy chapter and I'm going to be going, going, to be going through this really, really super fast for you. Okay, uh, we're going to be covering development, which is economics chapter number one. And this is a very easy peasy chapter. We have taken some questions on this particular chapter in the uh, exam preparation session that I did for you, right? Uh, education world says, what is a concept capsule? Okay, Aarti says, thank you ma'am, I have this chapter in my exam. Great, okay. So education world, let me tell you, concept capsule is basically where I will be explaining the gist of the chapter to you. I will be giving you the macro concept, but I will not go into details. Now, I don't know if some of you attended my, the other concept capsules that I did. Uh, we did uh, nationalism in Europe. Uh, and we did nationalism in India, both of which I covered as concept capsules, which means that I covered the, you know, the general gist of the chapter, but I didn't go into, you know, exact details. If you want exact details, then it would be a good idea to go and, uh, you know, go and ahead and attend the session. The development uh, chapter will be coming up for you very shortly on, uh, on the channel, of course. But apart from that, this chapter will be like a good revision for you. So even if you have your exam, before we put out the chapter, you are totally covered right okay now uh, education world says okay ma'am actually this chapter was on my unit test also hi Bharatwaj ma'am for us chapter uh, third chapter in economics Pavan we will keep you posted for everything I will try my best to put out things as soon as possible and which is why I know that you know you may not be getting the chapters that you need as, as soon as possible but we are trying to balance a whole lot of other things and that is why I did the exam prep for you so in the exam preparation you would have got a whole lot of uh, you know chapters across all the subjects over there which would then give you preparation of how to answer these chapters right okay Pratyush says I attended all sessions of yours I never miss any sessions that's great Pooja says ma'am will we have menti for SS uh, Pooja, I don't have notification of this yet, but if you want a mentee, sure, I'll talk to the channel and we'll try and get this organized for you, okay? All right, now let us talk about -da! <laughs> development. So listen, on Teacher's Day, by the way, let me tell you that I got a voice message that said that I love the sound effects that Tarana ma'am does. She does, ta-da! <laughs> so let me tell you that I also love doing these sound effects and uh, I think... Learning should be like in a musty atmosphere, right? Who says we have to be all serious and learn? We can smile and learn. We can laugh and learn. And we there are lots of ways to learn. If learning becomes fun, then 
we learn better also right okay bharat vaj we'll i'll talk to the channel and we'll try and arrange a menti for you also okay sectors of the economy is in my exam can you put that ma'am okay aarti i will also put a uh, put that request to the channel definitely but in the meantime sectors of the economy has been covered in our exam prep session so please go ahead and uh, check it out also by the way for sectors of the economy last year we did a lot of exam prep for sectors of the economy so you can go ahead and check out some of the sessions that were done for the last year 10th standards also and you will find that you will have a lot of topics over there you will have globalization over there you will have uh, sectors of the economy over there uh, many many chapters basically which you can go ahead and uh, attend okay now talking about development i want to ask you all what does development mean to you randomly tell me forget about what your textbook says okay i want to know from you what according to you would be development like if you think of the word development what does development mean like maybe somebody for development they will say development means growth what do you give me some words that you think are synonymous or, or go with the concept of development very good purnima progress absolutely right divyansh also says progress uh, bharatwaj says de developing without damaging anything yes we will come to that uh, self growth absolutely right shubhrika says improvement pratyush says development developing new things which means innovation that's superb absolutely right uplifting standard of living absolutely right so some of the words that we can use that are that you know when people talk about development they generally would mean stuff like growth they would mean achievement they would mean progress they would mean um basically achievement right you're talking about progress moving forward development is something that means moving forward it means growth it means progress right it could mean evolution also right now the point over here is that growth or progress or achievement or evolution or development means different things to different people which means for example example if you like some i saw some people over here saying education world says development means increase in stock uh, my diary says improving yourself sonali dey says uplifting standard of living right urmila says ma'am please speak in hindi okay urmila i'll try my best to do that for you um, so basically uh, what does development mean to you is the question over here now yes for some people it would be progress in the economy absolutely right okay uh, urmila i'm going to try and do a mix of hindi and english so that everybody understands it because i can't stick to one particular language only right but we will try our best so that you understand and in case you have any sort of doubts you can ask me again right uh, ma'am says i am bishal hi bishal okay now individual uh, to an individual development could mean different things so for example let's talk about a farmer what would development mean to a farmer kisan ke liye what would development mean kisan kya chahega what will the what will the farmer want he will basically want okay okay my i have some produce isko main market mein uh, i'll i'll sell it at a high price okay so basically you're talking about high price for goods right or for his fruits or vegetables or whatever yes it could mean good crops for him also absolutely right it could mean a uh, more uh, more cost or more price for his crops also right absolutely right correct now if you take a housewife what would a development mean to a housewife or to a householder for the housewife they would say okay you know what i want to be able to buy my goods at a low cost right maybe to someone else they would say okay development means more opportunity to study because some people don't have opportunity to study right maybe for another person the person will say oh i've had enough of studying i want more play time right so the fact over here is yes yes see so many answers over here right i see respect i see freedom i see save money i see needs respect proper working conditions absolutely right so the point that i'm trying to make for you over here number one point is that now i'll put this in a different color for you so you can see point number one is that development means different things to different people 
right which means what is development to one may not necessarily be development to another person right now if you take the examples that we put over here the fact is development means different things to different people you all have just listed so many things that development could mean for different people now if you understand it properly some of these goals okay could be conflicting so for example if you talk about the farmer the farmer wants to sell his fruit at a fruit or vegetable or whatever at a high cost okay but if you take the case of the housewife she wants to buy that same fruit or vegetable for a lower price so what does this mean which means that what is development for the farmer may not be development for the housewife which means we come to point number 2 point number 2 is that the perspective or the idea of development could cause conflict right can cause conflict you see right over here we've got two examples where they want completely different things right if one of them gets what they want the other person will not be happy so the fact is that their their idea of uh, development is very conflicting so point number 1 is development means different things to different people point number 2 is that the idea of development could bring about conflict right now when you take uh, the idea of development or the goals of development um, it's a mix of many things like we said but one general thing that we would talk about would be probably um, what is something that could be a good indicator of uh, development what do you think according to you would be a good indicator of development when most people say ah that if you have this for example then you are developed one important criteria for development or one important factor as far as develop yes absolutely right education world says income bharatwaj says income absolutely right development is necessary but has many aspects absolutely capital absolutely so you're talking about income right income is considered as development for most people whether it is a farmer whether it is the housewife because you feel that if you have surplus income if you have more income you can grow more you can achieve more you can progress more and hence you can be more developed right but the question again over here is is income the only indicator of development no there are so many other aspects so many of you just now also told me things that you all would want things like for example respect uh somebody may want freedom somebody may want something else somebody may want equality right so the fact is that there are many many aspects of development so each person has different developmental goals so we can come to the third point or dignity absolutely right so the third point that we can come to over here which i'm going to put for you in blue is that development is a mix of both material as well as non material goals right so material means what material means something that is tangible something that you can touch something that is physical जिसको जैसे पैसे को हम हाथ लगा सकते हैं राइट सो यू से ओके आई कैन काउंट इट आई कैन फील इट सो दिस इज अ टैंजेबल थिंग आई यू नो इट्स इट्स क्वांटिफाइबल देयर इज क्वांटिटी बट देन देयर आर सम थिंग्स दैट आर डीलिंग नॉट ओनली विद क्वांटिटी दीस आर द थिंग्स दैट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द नॉन मटेरियल एस्पेक्ट्स दोस डील विद क्वालिटी right so for example equality respect freedom absolutely right correct divyansh says material is income and study aesthetics says non material is equality respect freedom etc right vishu says i love your accent okay that's great so we have arrived at three very important points what are the three important points as far as development is concerned point number 1 is that development means different things to different people Point number 2 is that the idea of development could bring about conflict right and point number 3 is that development is always a mix of both material and as well as non material aspects or material or non material goals right so these are three important points that you need to understand because this is how you will understand as we you know as we, as we go ahead you will understand that these three points play a very very important part right now the point over here is if development means different things to different people how would you compare uh, development amongst different individuals like how would you compare who is more developed right pooja has summed it up very nicely different goals conflicts and combination of goals absolutely right 
okay now tell me how would you compare in uh, you know development for a person how would you say that one person is more developed than the other how can uh, tell me gdp is at the level of a nation talk about an individual right so for example all these things that you're talking to me are going to be coming about later but talk at the individual level okay maybe by income but what else see basically it's like saying supposing you have a teacher in class and the teacher in class has to decide who the best student is now how can you decide who the best student is if you don't know what it is that makes up the best student are you comparing the student based on the amount of sports that the student does are you comparing the student based on the attendance that the students has are you comparing the students based on the amount that they are participating in class so how would you compare and decide who was the best student so similarly what we need to do is to compare the development of individuals you need to let me put this down for you in another color you need to to compare you need to select the most important criteria and then you need to compare the uh, the individual based on that so for example in a class if the student if the you know principal tells the student a teacher now you have to compare the best student based on uh, you know being an all rounder in sports then it's clear to the teacher ah, okay okay so i have to see who is the best in sports over here otherwise it's very very difficult to decide who is the best student similarly for an individual how can you say who is most developed you can't say you have to take certain criteria select the most important criteria and then you could compare individuals based on that right vishu says discipline yes it could be on that could be a criteria that you could choose to uh, to see who is the best student absolutely right okay so now we've gone ahead and we've discussed we've talked about development for an ind individual right what is the criteria we just spoke about criteria the criteria for development could be anything it could be income it could be respect it could be freedom it could be equality you choose the most important criteria and then say okay okay this person uh, you know has this particular criteria so this partic particular person is more developed than the other or has grown more than the other right okay so now we've talked about development for an individual now let's go ahead and talk about development for a nation similarly that i spoke to you about uh, development for an individual same way development for a nation also has the same three points what are the same three points that is number one point is what what is the number one point when we're talking about development i puja had summed it up very very nicely for us earlier what is the first thing similarly for a nation you will say that development number one means means what means different things for different people that is point number 1 okay point number 2 is also for a nation whether you're talking about an individual or you're talking about the nation is that development for one may cause conflict yes there would be different goals and these goals could be conflicting so for example if you talk about in a nation okay people have different goals so say there is one person who says okay my idea of development for a nation is that the country should have more transport and more communication and more road ways which means that they should be you know more urbanized so to have a more urban setup to create more roads to create more communication i should basically just you know um chop down all the trees and i should chop down all the forests now to that person this means development but to another person say the tribal living living in the forest or maybe to uh, you know uh, an environmentalist they would not consider this as development they say how can you cut down the forest cover how can you cut down the green cover that is not development and you see these two goals for one person and the other is basically they, there is conflicting there is conflict in this case too so even for a nation developmental goals could be different people have different ideas about development and these ideas of development could be conflicting and similarly for a nation also like we spoke about in terms of individuals that it is a mix of material and non material aspects same way for a nation also there is a mix of material and non material aspects let's talk about material aspects in terms of development of a nation what would be one criteria of development in terms of material aspect we spoke about this even in terms of individuals one very important criteria in terms of development would be what income 
right more income means more development absolutely right now the point over here is how can you calculate the income of a country well in a very simplistic world in a very simple world you could calculate the income of the country by taking the total income of the people total income of all people right and this would give you the what we call the national income what is national income if you take if there are 100 people in the in the in the country each person has a different income you total up the income of all these 100 people and this will give you the national income of that particular country right now is national income a good indicator of development okay let us use an example let us talk about two countries country a and country b and both these countries have a national income of 1000 rupees right would i be right in saying that both countries are equally developed what do you see what do you say yes puja says population differs v, uh, v u j t r says no sanjay says no harshit says no divya says no absolutely right because the population of the country is different so for example the population of country a could be what maybe the population of country a is 50 people whereas the population of country b is 20 people so in which case how would we you know we, how would we compare the development so in this case what do you need to do you don't need to take the national income for for comparing development what you need to take is the average income or the per capita income right so what is the per capita income per capita income is basically the total income divided by the total population right this is the average income or the per capita income right now if you take country a what is the per capita income of country a what would the average income of of a citizen over here be well if you divide uh, i'll just put this for you in a different color so we know okay if you divide uh, 1000 by 50 you will get 20 rupees as the per capita income right and in the second case if you divide 1000 by 20 people you will get 50 rupees as the per capita income so in which case does the citizen have more spending power or more average income right absolutely right this would be country b so then you would say that per capita income is definitely a much better indicator of development than national income national income will not give you the correct picture because you're only totaling you know all the uh, incomes that all the people have but what is the average what is the average person in the country uh, in what is the average income of the person in the country or income of the average person in the country well this would be uh, average income would be uh, what we call per capita income right so yes in this case Purnima says B is developed Munna says B is developed Divyansh says B is more developed hi good afternoon Rehan absolutely right but the point over here is while per capita income is a very good indicator it is definitely better than national income national income will not give you the accurate picture of development but is per capita income the only indicator of development per capita income also has its own limitations what is the limitation of per capita income tell me let me put this for you in green over here what is the limitation of per capita income who can tell me yes national income is not the only criterion absolutely right so we moved on to per capita income which is the average income but per capita income also has a problem what is the problem with per, per capita income Per capita income does not tell us how this population, yes, it doesn't give us a clear picture. It cannot give us a clear picture, Ishwari, because absolutely right, Divyansh, because income is not divided equally. Absolutely correct. Per capita income hides how this income is distributed right which means that some people in the country could have much more than 50 rupees 
as their average income whereas some people in the country could have merely 10 rupees as their average income so it does not tell us distribution of wealth it's like saying a teacher comes to class and she says oh class today you're like 10 people and now I've got 10 cupcakes for you here take these cupcakes now you'll share them amongst, amongst yourselves and she put the cups she puts the cupcakes right at the beginning at the front row and then she leaves the class how does the teacher know whether each student each student has got one one cupcake or whether only the people in the front row have taken two two cupcakes or three three cupcakes we don't know that right so per capita income cannot yes it hides uh, disparities it does not tell us how this income has been distributed absolutely right boss Saurabh says some people have more income and other people have less income so because of this limitation definitely we, we need other indicators per capita income cannot be the only indicator indicator of development so we take into other factors now like I told you development is a mix of material aspects as well as non material aspects of material goals and non material goals let's talk about some of the non material goals for a nation if you talk about non material goals for a nation well there could be for example a country could be uh, you know compared in terms of development based on for example their health status right you could say the people who are more healthy, uh, which, whichever country has more healthy people, that country is more developed. This would be a, would be a non-material goal. Now the point over here is, or for example, you could have education level, right? Education level could also be considered as a non-material goal uh, for that particular nation, right? Now talking about health status, how can you... Uh, how can you measure the health status? Is there any indicator of health status? Well, there are certain indicators in both these cases. Yes, I've got some answers over here. One very good indicator for, uh, I will put this down for you in white. One very good indicator for health status would be the infant mortality rate. I'm putting this down, down for you in white. What is the infant mortality rate? Who can tell me what is the infant mortality rate? Tell me, what is the infant mortality rate? Yes, absolutely right, as well as life expectancy. I'm coming to that. What is infant mortality rate? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. What is infant mortality rate? <laughs> infant mortality rate. Yes, Pooja, absolutely right. Infant mortality rate is basically the uh, number of children who die. Absolutely correct. Number of children dying below one year of age right uh, let me just put over here less than one year right amidst a population of how many amidst a population of thousand live births this is what infant mortality rate is right so number of children who die are below the age of one out of thousand live births so in this case for example let us say that country a has an infant mortality rate of uh, country a has an infant mortality rate of say uh, 75 out of 100 children whereas country b has an infant mortality rate of 35 out of 100 uh, sorry out of 1000 children right so in which case would you say that uh, the country is more developed would it be country a or would it be country b come on tell me tell me tell me tell me yes absolutely right b is more developed b is more developed because they have a lower infant mortality rate so low infant mortality rate means more development why would this be uh, indicative well lower mortality rate means lower infant mortality rate means that that country has access to more health care maybe that country has access to more nutrition maybe that country has uh, less prejudice in terms of you know girl and boy births and which is why less children are dying right so there there are so many things that infant mortality rate this one indicator of infant mortality rate can give us such a better picture about development in the country and more about the health picture in that particular country right absolutely right Vishnu infant mortality rate is inversely proportional to development which means that the lower the infant mortality rate the higher the development absolutely correct right now let's talk about another indicator another indicator over here would be life expectancy 
Now, what exactly is life expectancy? Life expectancy is basically you're talking about the average. Uh, you're talking about the life expectancy. Let me put it down for you as birth. Life expectancy at birth. Which means that the average amount, oh yeah, maths and economics, absolutely right. Uh, the average expected years that a human being will live to in a particular country. So, for example, let's say that in country A, the, in, the life expectancy is uh, 75 years right and in country b it is 90 years in which case would you say that the country is more developed which which would give us a better picture of the health status expected lifespan of an individual absolutely right yes absolutely correct b would be considered as more uh, as more developed so we are basically saying higher the life expectancy more the development now, I, you can't see it. Let me put it for you. Let me hide or let me put it. Let me put it down over here for you. Higher the life expectancy means more development. Right. So, in the case of infant mortality, it is inversely proportional, which means lower the infant mortality, more the development. Life expectancy is ulta. More the life expectancy, more the development. Right. And this will give us a clearer picture of the health status. Now, let's talk about education. Same way that we spoke about some indicators for uh, health status, are there some indicators for education also? Yes, Vishnu says life expectancy is directly proportional to, to development. Absolutely correct. Okay, now, yes, I see some answers over here and you all have given me also what it is. Cool. So, one good indicator for education level would be literacy rate in a country. So, what is the literacy rate? For example, literacy rate is people who can read and write who are literate above seven years of age, right? Uh, taking into account the the amount of people who are literate as a proportion of the total population. So again, if they have a higher literacy rate, okay, then it means that the country is more educated, right? That would be a good thing for the country. So higher means more development, right? Now, another indicator for education level would be what? Let's talk about another uh, indicator. What would be another? Yes. Hey, you all are pros, yeah. You all are, this is absolutely correct. It is net attendance ratio. Net attendance ratio is what? What is net attendance ratio? Net, attention, uh, net attendance ratio is basically children in any age group, okay? If you take a particular age group and you study it, your textbook says 14 to 15 years of age. So basically, lit, uh, net attendance ratio is the number of children in a particular age group all right, which is expressed as a percentage. These are the people who are attending school out of the total population. Okay, so it's expressed as a percentage. So, for example, uh, let's say, um, let's say um, country A again, we'll put it down so it's clearer for us. Country A has a net attendance ratio of uh, 95 out of 100 children uh, attending school. Whereas country B has a net attendance uh, ratio of uh, net attendance ratio of say for example 25 out of 100 people attending school. So in which case would you say that the country is more developed? Come on, happy Onam. Yes, absolutely right. Country A is more developed. Absolutely correct. So the higher the net attendance ratio, the more the development. Right? Now, I'm just trying to tell you one thing over here. Whatever we've put down for you over here, we've spoken about certain uh, material goals for a nation, which is income, per capita income. We've spoken about health status and education level, which are non-material goals for, an, uh, for a nation. So what we've done is, these are certain criteria. But like this, there are so many criteria that uh, countries can be developed, uh, can be considered developed upon, right? Same way for an individual, there are so many criteria over there. So how would you go ahead and how would you say which country is more developed than the other? 
well there are different ways to do this let's talk about how you can compare uh, countries based on development according to what the UNDP does what does the UNDP do well the UMD, UNDP basically has something called the HDR right what is the HDR? The HDR is what we say is the Human Development Report. So, the UNDP published what we call is the HDR, which is the Human Development Report, right? Yes, according to NCRT, absolutely right, the age group is 14 to 15, absolutely correct. That's correct. Okay, now HDR is the human development report. So what UNDP does is that in this human development report, they have come up with a very holistic indicator that takes into account, uh, or focuses more on well-being. Okay, in this, so what is this indicator? I think a lot of body mass index, absolutely not. <laughs> they take into account a very holistic indicator. This indicator is the HDI. The HDI is a holistic indicator which focuses on well-being rather than just accumulation of wealth. just accumulation of wealth which means we are saying that for a country to be considered developed according to the UNDP they need to have a more like a more holistic viewpoint it's not just about per capita income it's just not about the income of the country or just the accumulation of the wealth of the country so the UNDP basically in the HDR it takes into account three dimensions or three factors which it then uses to give the country it's HDI. What are these three factors that it takes into account? The three factors that it takes into account would be number one, the health status of the people in that country. How would they measure the health status of that country? Well, they would talk about it in terms of life expectancy of the people in that particular country, right? Then what is the other thing that they would take into account? The other thing that they would take into account, no, here Ishwari, they don't take into account Ish, uh, uh, infant mortality rate. They take into, for the, for, to measure the health, they take into account life expectancy. While infant mortality rate is one of the indicators of, uh, of um, health status, specifically the HDR takes into account the, uh, the HDI takes into account the uh, life expectancy, which is the average number of years that a person lives from the time of birth right absolutely right second uh, literacy rate would be correct so basically again you're well they're talking more about the education level not so much about the literacy rate second factor that they take into account is the education level now education level is basically measured by the average years of schooling or the expected years of schooling Right. So basically, this will give us the education level of the people in that particular country. The third factor that they take into account is to understand the standard of living of the people. And this standard of living can be measured how standard of living can be measured by the per capita income. Right. So basically, what the HDI does is or what the, H, the UNDP does is that they take an average of all of these factors. They take, they, they get an average of this. And then this average is what gives the country its HDI rank. What is HDI? HDI is Human Development Index. Human Development Index is a, a holistic indicator which focuses on well-being more than the accumulation of wealth. Right? This is what the HDI is. And then based on this average, they give the country its HDI or the Human Development Index. The Human Development Index is basically a rank that the country gets. Right. And then these countries are developed. What were their UNDP is doing is they are comparing approximately 190 countries. 
right? So they take the average of these three things, right? Life expectancy, per capita income, as well as the education level. And then they give the country its HDI or which is its rank amongst 190 countries approximately. And in this case, the higher the HDI or the higher the rank, the more developed a country is. So for example, you have Norway, which is number one in terms of HDI and India what is uh, India's uh, um, HDI can you tell me what is the rank that India has come on tell me tell me tell me what is the rank that India has Norway is number one on the HDI India is at number 100 no it is not number seven yes Vishnu it is uh, no Surinder it is not 133 it is yes Vishnu says it is 131 India has a rank or an HDI of 131 Norway is number one now why is HDI useful HDI or human development index is very important to study because this way we can number one compare the development of different countries and it tells a country what what are the aspects that they need to work more on so for example India's got 131 which is a comparatively much lower rank so then that makes us understand no now we need to work more on the other indices we need to work more on per capita income we need to work more on health status we need to work more on education level so this gives the government an accurate picture of what are the areas that they are supposed to work on so that according to these criteria India can be considered as more developed or anyone can be considered as more developed developed right Vishu says India is quite slow in development uh, Vishu well you could say that definitely taking a look at the HDI rank but there are many factors for it if you see for so long India was actually under the colonial rule that is one of the biggest factors why we've had a slower development probably than you know another average country so there are various factors you can't really um, you know talk about say it like that but the fact is that yes if you're talking about the HDI it definitely is less developed than your other countries right okay with this we have classified how the UNDP talks about development in different countries the UNDP publishes what we call the HDR which is the human development report in that they publish what is known as the HDI or the human development index all right uh, study aesthetic uh, with me I'm not going to get into cross enrollment ratio right now we'll be putting up a session for you we you will get more details over here here we have to do a quick quick run through okay now uh, so here they put the HDI and based on this HDI you can compare the development of different country uh, countries now there are certain other factors also another attribute as far as the World Bank is concerned they talk about sustainable development the World Bank says if a country is practicing more sustainable development that country is better in terms of development this is considered nowadays as a new uh, attribute of, sust of uh, sustainable development now what is sustainable development Bharatwaj has given me the answer. It is developing, uh, developing without damaging the environment. Absolutely right. See what is happening. Okay, world over is that we are basically moving towards using more and more resources. There is more population, so there are more needs, and not just more needs. There is also more greed. And as a result of more needs and more greed and increasing population, we are actually putting a huge amount of pressure on the limited resources that we have, right? So what happens is that these limited resources get depleted or get exhausted. Now, if we deplete the natural resources that we have, the limited resources that we have, not only are we putting ourselves at the risk of not having these resources anymore, but we are also putting our future generations at risk. Imagine that, that you know, there's a very strong possibility with the, if you talk about water, the way we are using and exploiting water and putting a pressure on water, you know, we're not conserving it, for example, there is a high chance that our future generations are going to run out of water and you never know, tomorrow there may be wars based on water because water is such a limited resource so what does this mean this means that we need to conserve our resources we need to 
take care of our resources this is very very important right we need to conserve our resources in such a way that our future generations have it plus we need to take care of our environment we need to see right now the way that we are using our resources the way we are contaminating and polluting our resources we are leading to not only depletion of resources we are also leading to ecological crisis right and ecological crisis is definitely a not good not a good thing we've got a hole in the ozone layer which now slowly thankfully is repairing because there's a lot of awareness uh, coming in but our groundwater is getting con contaminated it's going to throw things off balance right so because of these reasons which is number one the depletion of resources number two the ecological crisis that we are causing we need to practice sustainable development what is sustainable development sustainable development is basically come on tell me what is sustainable development sustainable development i'm just putting it in as sd over here is basically using our resources judicially judiciously or taking care of our development development in the present basically should not should not yes also saving for future generations should not compromise on the need of the future generations right i'm just putting it for you in short form over here should not compromise on future generation need right and this is what develop sustainable development means absolutely right development in the present should not compromise the future generations right so which means that we do need to develop it doesn't mean sustainable development doesn't mean stop using resources stop using water stop taking a shower please don't stop taking a shower it's very very important <laughs> okay i'm just saying take a shower carefully don't waste as much water don't waste so many resources if you're in a particular room switch off the you know the air conditioning or switch off the lights and fans when you're not using them conserve the resources uh, develop uh, in such a way where we're not causing an ecological crisis so basically development but development not at the cost of the future generations right okay vishu's laughing saying okay yeah. he's like definitely take a shower taking a shower is very very important okay Rocky bhai says how to write answers in English in SST. Rocky bhai, go ahead and attend the exam prep session that I did for you. I did a, a long exam prep session which I explained in detail how to go ahead and uh, answer the questions. Right. So please definitely go ahead and take a look at this. Muskan says, is it premiere or live? It is prim. It is not premiere. It is live. I am talking to you all. Okay. Mishti, no menti today. Vishu says it's live. Okay. Listen. <laughs> by now let me tell you my concept capsule is over all right uh, this is basically a gist of the development chapter like i said i've not gone into details we will be putting out the chapter for you but you know using what we've answered for you in terms of uh, the exam prep where we've given you the most possible questions the most important questions as well as giving you a concept capsule i think that you are very sorted in case you have midterm exams plus we will be putting out the development chapter for you very very soon also okay harsh says i love your teaching style thank you rocky bhai i've already answered your question go ahead and watch your uh, go ahead and watch the exam prep session right okay pooja we will definitely tell the channel to go ahead and do a mentee and that's it for me today but listen before i go i want to tell you that we have lots of opportunities for you are you using the opportunities first of all how many of my viewers over here have subscribed to our channel please subscribe to our channel is very very important you will be missing out on such important updates if you do not subscribe to the channel please definitely do this all right now apart from that uh, make use of the opportunities that we have over here every week we have the first 500 users that get our byju's mini learning program absolutely free 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 <laughs> so please get, you know get into the link the link is in your description box click on the link type in the code yt first and make use of the opportunities that we have for you another very good thing that i would tell you is 
mini learning program subscribing to our channel definitely also i would say download the byju's app and become a premium user the way that we explain the concepts to you over there in terms of videos and visually i'm telling you the byju's app is like my it's like my uh, like I, I refer it's like my guide I refer to the Baiju's app for everything and I feel that if you were to download it also you would definitely get a much clearer picture you will not ever have a problem with any of your subjects ever again okay uh, for ninth session we will keep you posted yes telegram also I was just about to say that Muskan please join telegram it's a huge um, you know opportunity again we have so much stuff happening for you over there homework poll quiz and you know PDF sessions and like I don't even need to tell you the benefits yeah just go ahead and join the channel what are you doing okay all right and with that I say please definitely attend the sessions that we have for you on the channel you know go ahead and um, you know watch whatever we have for you we have so much stuff happening for you but I'm saying don't just watch also like share and subscribe you need to subscribe to our channel so that you know what we are putting out for you and uh, i think that's it from me today all right i'm gonna see you very very soon see you next time bye bye